Yes, indeed, folks. You're listening to Blue Please here on CircleBrit.com with myself, Total Biscuit. Come and join us in the chat room if you're listening live. Click the chat button at the bottom of the screen at CircleBrit.com and that will take you to a video wall of questionable individuals. Right, okay, let's talk about what I was going to talk about, which is the subject of rated battlegrounds. Take a little trip with me over to MMO Champion, which is where most of this news comes from. Indeed, it's where the only worthwhile news comes from in the WoW community, so hey, there you go. Why get it from anywhere else? Okay. So, 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 it was a very short quote regarding this. It's, let's see, yes, it's a blue post right here, and I'll link this in the show notes on cynicalbrit.com for those of you listening to the archive. Now, this is about pre-made rated battlegrounds. Okay, let's talk about it. So, here's the quote for you. We feel that five-player dungeons are the kind of thing we can do more or less ra- Hang on, let's try this again, because that's terrible. We feel five-player... No, try again. We feel like five-player dungeons are the kind of thing we can more or less randomly assemble and give you a reasonable chance of success. That doesn't even make any sense. (laughs) No wonder I was tripping over on it. That's a terrible sentence. What they mean by that is... With five-man dungeons, you can basically put together a pug and you'll have a good chance of beating the instance. Even in that case, however, we have to make sure that you have a tank and a healer, and look at gear and experience and all that kind of thing. Putting together groups for BGs is a much taller proposition, especially when rating and epic gear are potentially involved. We want players to individually decide what kinds of classes and mechanics they need to be successful. We want players to decide what gear or experience requirements they are looking for. Most importantly, we want players to organize themselves. We want you to decide who is the leader and what your strategy is. And we want you to have a mechanism for handling players who refuse to follow those goals, just want to argue, or are refusing to be team players. Randomly assembling groups would require many additional features, tools, and rules that are very tricky to design in order to enforce these things. When someone else does the inviting, they can set the ground rules, and you can, of course, live with them, challenge them, or look for another group. It, is not, it does require a little war work on your part in the upfront stage of things, but you will have a much better experience in the long run. To be clear, you can still solo queue for normal, non-rated battlegrounds and still earn honor points to purchase gear. If you want conquest points, which we call arena points today, you'll need to enter rated battlegrounds, you'll need to form a group to do so. This is the same requirement we make for raiding, which provides similar rewards. Okay. We well, don't really require that, do you? Let's be honest. Okay, so. This is an interesting statement for a variety of different reasons. Firstly, it's a very heartening statement because it's Blizzard treating this particular style of play with some degree of respect. And that's a good thing. No doubt about that. Yes, indeed, difficult content is designed to be done with a group, an organized group, a proper group. Isn't it odd that over the past two years, with Wrath of the Lich King, we have been encouraged to believe otherwise? It's true, we have. Heroic Five Mans used to require a good group that knew what they were doing and indeed were attuned to the instance. Now, I'm not in favor of the attunements per se, but what you have right now is a situation where pretty much any old idiot can get in the dungeon finder, be dropped in the instance, and there you go. The only ones that are really limited are the five-man heroics in ICC. They require a certain baseline of gear. Now, that baseline of gear can be acquired very easily by running any of the other dungeons. Indeed, you will over-gear that if you go in with, say, item level 232, which is what you get from getting badges, which of course can be acquired from Heroic Oak Guard Keep, then indeed you can get it from normal Oak Guard Keep, for God's sake. You don't get them very fast, but you can do it. You overgear the instance like that. So, that is what they have told us. That is what they have enforced lately, is five-man heroics are not challenging enough to justify getting together a proper group. So, does that apply to raiding? Well, in some cases, yes, it really, really does. So, you can pug pretty much anything at the moment, up to maybe Syndragoza, and you might run into a few issues on Putricide. Hell, most of the issues you're going to have on Syndragoza are not the fact that people don't know what they're doing, but they're lagging out due to random graphical issues, as we discovered for three sodding months on that goddamn encounter. 
I'll tell you, it's impossible to do that encounter if 20% of your raid is at 2 FPS and is randomly lagging all over the place, because apparently the crazy-ass blue fire effect is not properly optimized, which is fairly hilarious considering how bad it looks in comparison to other games. So, that's what Blizzard's been saying. They've been saying it is okay to get tier 9 in a pug. It is okay indeed to get tier 10 in a pug, because we gave you a boss that is a loot pinata specifically for that. It is okay indeed to get high level PvP gear in a raid pug. That's what Blizzard has said. And if you told me several years ago that Blizzard was going to go down that route, then I would have turned around and called you an idiot, because that's ridiculous. But there you go, that's their change in attitude. So, why after all of this time exactly are they changing over to this? I mean, one might argue that it's purely a PvP thing, and PvP's always been like this. No, it hasn't. Indeed, since the honor changes came in, you could get top-level epic gear simply by showing up. You can do that in arenas as well. You can lose 10 arenas per week, and you will get points which you can spend towards Epic Gear. You get that for doing literally nothing. You could stand there and do nothing. And indeed, until they brought personal ratings in, you could do that until you got to a low level and then remake your goddamn team. It's a disgrace, honestly. You are literally giving people stuff for absolutely nothing. It's problematic, is it not? Okay. Now, the statement that Rated Battlegrounds require an organized team is correct, of course. You're talking about a mode of play which requires the cooperation of a bare minimum of 10 people and usually up to 25. So, yes, absolutely, they should be making it so that you can only go in there with a proper team. You can't queue up on your own. That's a good thing. That is a really good thing. I remember when raiding used to be like that. I remember when five mans used to be like that. When pugging five man heroics was a bad idea. Indeed, until the e very end of TBC, where they nerfed everything into the floor and, of course, handed out random tier six grade gear for no apparent reason at all. Which indeed was the beginning of the end, as far as I'm concerned, for proper risk reward scenarios. You didn't want to go in there with a random group of people because you would most likely die. Now, the optimal way to do five mans is with a random group of people. It is actually the optimal way to do so. You might argue, oh, well, you should go in there with five of your own guys. That's true, but you actually get a buff if you don't. So, technically speaking, in terms of pure numbers and mathematics, the optimal way to do it is to queue up for a random group. That's pretty disgraceful when you think about it. It's a terrible, terrible idea. So, I want to know exactly, since they have suddenly come to the realization that, oh, you know what, it's a really, really bad thing to have rated battlegrounds whereby you're in with a bunch of random scrubs that won't do what you want them to do. Why is it then okay to raid with a bunch of random scrubs who won't do what you want them to do, and indeed, give them enough leeway so that they can actually screw around and they won't wipe the raid? And just bear this in mind. Anything outside of hard modes, which indeed are artificially locked down for ICC anyway, so you're not going to get any pugs going in there, can be pugged without any issues whatsoever, and making mistakes does not matter. Right, let's have a think here. Let's go through the encounters and see. Think of an encounter which would, say, kill you if you made a big mistake. Well, I can think of... Let's see, one off the top of my head. Let's go through them one by one. Okay, Maragar, if you die, will it kill your raid? No. Okay, let's think of some other stuff. What about Death Whisper? No. Airship Battle? No. Sour Fang? Mm, possibly. But most likely no. Especially considering how much they've nerfed it. Maybe at the start, when it was completely unnerfed, sure. But not anymore. What else have we got? Rot Face? No. Festigil? No. Putricide? No. The Blood Princess, will that wipe it? No. Nope. Blood Queen, yes. There's one that will act. If you die in that, if you don't, if you screw up, yeah. You can really, really, really screw up. And by that, of course, I mean not biting someone in time. You don't do that, then yes, oh look, you are suddenly mind controlled. Enjoy that. There you go. Now you could actually wipe the raid, but potentially you could still kill that dude. 
So it's not necessarily a wipe, certainly with the buff that they've given now. But it is more wipe likely than other encounters. What else have we got? So there's that stupid dragon that anyone can kill. Nope. Sindragoza. Mm, no, I don't think so. Nope. Ah, uh, Lich King. Probably. But if you expect them to get the Lich King, well, I think you're sorely mistaken. Anyway, so most of the encounters, the vast majority in ICC, do not rely on a cohesive raid that doesn't make mistakes. There is sufficient leeway, and indeed that leeway has been increasing since they introduced that buff. The buff's now at 25%. That is huge. Absolutely enormous. That is almost as large as the 30% across the board nerf that was put into play with Sunwell. In this case, however, the 30% nerf is to a dungeon that is much easier than Sunwell. I mean, we are not talking Sunwell level difficulty here by any stretch of the imagination. No way. Absolutely not. Don't tell me that ICC is as difficult as Sunwell. It is not. No way. Hell, I would say half of those encounters aren't even as hard as Black Temple. There are exceptions. Putricide's pretty hard. I'll give you that. I'd say Lanathel will be fairly hard, except for the fact that there's a mod which completely negates any kind of organization required. What else is there? Syndrigoza? Yeah, that's pretty hard, considering you randomly lag all over the place. Thank you, Blizzard, for the 2 FPS. Lich King? Okay, and a boss. Pretty hard. And then, of course, you look at the hard modes, and well, oh, well, you know, this is the grand savior of everything. Well, it's not really, is it? I mean, the rewards that you get from hard mode, it, they're barely upgrades. You just look at the statistics. Now, if you had a full set of hard mode gear, then yeah, sure, you'd hit harder, you'd be a bit tougher, but it's not a massive change. You're looking at, there are some encounters in hard mode that are, you know, by a factor of five at least harder. I mean, they are hugely more difficult. I mean, you compare Firefighter even in Old War, you know, Firefighter, compare that to normal. Oh, Lord. Uh, massive, massive difference in the Mimiron encounter there. And there are some ICC fights that qualify for that as well. So, can we please, Blizzard, apply this logic that you're putting in there completely correctly for rated battlegrounds to actual raid content? Because I, for one, am sick of content being aimed with this idea in mind that you will not be part of a cohesive group. And th this quote stood out for me specifically. You have to individually decide what kinds of classes and mechanics you need to be successful. Yeah, that used to be raiding, and then you took that away. Because apparently it's not okay. All you need to do in raiding these days is bring the player, not the class, as they've trumpeted for the past two years, and look where it got us. Single-handedly the worst expansion ever in terms of raid content, without a shadow of a doubt. Worse than TBC, worse than vanilla even. Seriously. It's bad. It is not a good expansion. I don't know how many of you played Vanilla and how many played TBC. I recall actually the bizarre bitching, which I never took part in, of the raid content in TBC. People were saying, oh, well, TBC ruined the game. It's so very, very did not. <laughs> but don't apply the fallacious logic that we're going to turn back in two years' time and say, oh, Wrath of the Lich King was so great, wasn't it? We just couldn't see it at the time. No, it's actually objectively, quantifiably, factually garbage in many ways. It is worse than the previous expansion by a significant margin in a wide variety of different areas, and most importantly, the fact that the development philosophy of the game has changed. Instead of saying, raid content is top-tier content, it is the end game. It is where the people who have hit the max level and have prepared properly can go with their friends, with their guildies, and they can defeat powerful encounters for powerful epics. That is what raiding used to be all about. And back then it was, yeah, you have to bring a proper class composition, otherwise you are dead. Yes, indeed you are. Why is it that we can't do that right now? You still need a tank and you still need a healer. So the principle is still there. We don't really, but we don't believe. This is the how stupid this bring the player, not the class philosophy is. Blizzard don't even really believe it themselves. If they really, truly believed that, they'd go all the way. You don't need a tank, you don't need a healer. But they don't, do they? Because, of course, the mechanics of the game are based on that. And you know what? The mechanics of the really complex stuff and the mechanics of stuff that actually works properly and is correctly balanced and is enjoyable is also based around you having a specific composition. 
And if you want to take that away and say, oh, it's, you can just play whatever you like, it's fine, you shouldn't have to work to get into dungeons, then you're going to end up with a disaster that we currently have today. So, Blizzard, please take that logic and apply it to raiding, because raiding has done more than PvP. Raiding is perhaps a more valuable element of the end game. Don't get me wrong, PvP is very popular and it has its place, and if you enjoy it, go for it. Very cool with that, personally not a fan. But whatever the case, please apply that philosophy across the board, and we might get back into some semblance of order. That's my hope at any rate, as to whether or not we'll get that. Well, that's another idea entirely. My name is Total Biscuit, and this is a little bit of Evergrey. Yes, indeed. This goes by the name of the Great Deceiver. We'll be right back after this. Enjoy.